Good afternoon and welcome to our TPEA Friday Lunch and Learn session. My name is John Green with Association Member Benefits Advisors. We're joined today by your Executive Director of TPEA, Ann Bishop, and we're going to talk about a lot of different things today. There's so much going on at the Capitol. We'll let Ann fill us in in a moment, then we'll jump to our topic at hand. But just a couple of quick housekeeping details before we get started. While people are logging in, we do appreciate, first of all, you joining us on your lunch hour. If you're an active state employee, thank you so much for serving our great state of Texas. We are recording these sessions. We make them available on the TPEA website for future viewing that you can share with the spouse, family members, uh, go back and look at it yourself. That way you can refer to it as well. You'll also see at the end of the conversation and throughout the conversation, you're going to see some QR codes. Some are related to membership if you're not a member. Um, we do want you to become a member. Some are related to information about some of the products and uh, services we're talking about today. But more importantly, we want you to take some notes, uh, learn and listen here. All participants are in a listen-only mode, which means that if you've got a question, please drop that into Q&A. And Ann, myself, Ray, uh, will all uh, stop and, uh, and answer those questions uh, directly specifically to you. Or if it's a question that maybe is beneficial for the whole group to hear, we'll stop and address that as well. So let me go ahead and get rolling here. And we want to, again, welcome our Executive Director Ann Bishop of the TPEA and Legislative Liaison Ray ML. And uh, Ann and Ray, things are getting pretty busy up there on the Capitol. Where, where do we stand today? They are. I'm going to let Ray start and then I'll wrap up. So okay. Ray, I'm going to start. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you all for your service to the state of Texas. And I don't think you get that note of appreciation often enough. But TPEA certainly wants you to know that you're very much appreciated and all you've done for the state of Texas. Uh, there is the, the big bill, the appropriations bill. And, and as you know, this is the one thing that the Constitution requires the legislature to pass. And that is the, the budget for the coming biennium, the appropriations bill. There is a complementary bill, Senate Bill 30, uh, which is the supplemental bill, which just applies to appropriations this biennium. And that's important to remember because uh, there, the two inter, there's an interaction between both the appropriations bill for the coming biennium and the uh, supplemental appropriations bill, which is House Bill 1, by the way. Uh, it is in what's called a conference committee, a conference committee that has been appointed by both the House and Senate, respectively, the five House members and five Senate members, to work out the differences, and there are some significant differences, between the two versions of the budget bills, both and they've done they appointed the same members to both the House, I mean to both the uh, supplemental bill and the general appropriations bill. Uh, one of the key features that you might want to note in the appropriations bill is that it does fund the ERS insurance plan uh, in such a way that ERS is indicated it's sufficient to preserve premiums at their current levels and and co-pays. It also makes uh, the annual promised $510 million a year debt payment to the ERS fund, which was promised, you may remember last session, by Senate Bill 321. So they're, they're following through on their promise in that, in that provision. In addition, in Senate Bill 30, which again is the supplemental bill, there's another $1 billion trust fund debt payment to ERS, which will significantly help their their liability, the actuarial liability. There's also about a $750 million payment into the law enforcement and correctional officer supplemental retirement fund. And that's a significant increase also. Uh, now, some of you may want to know, is there anything in there for a pay raise? Well, boy, is there. Uh, the supplemental bill, Senate Bill 30, would call for a pay raise to begin, begin July 1, this July 1 which is almost unprecedented in terms of how quickly that pay raise would come. Uh, it would be a 5% raise each year of the biennium with a $250 minimum increase each year. It, and it, second increase, however, would, be, would not be until September of 2024. Uh, the conference right. committee uh, is also- one, one quick thing before you get too far, it's $250 uh, increase a month, not a year. Right, three thousand a year. I'm sorry, you're right, Ann. Three three thousand a year, two hundred fifty dollars a month. 
And there are uh, several targeted raises on both versions of the bill, which need to be ironed out by the House and Senate. But several agencies had requested targeted raises and several agencies are receiving targeted raises for positions where there's been high turnover, where there are specialists like toxicologists and nurses, et cetera. So uh, that's something significant to remember too, to look, to look at what happens with your agency's budget. Um, there's also, there are also provisions, as we said, for, um, that would affect retirees. And that would, those would be provisions that would shore up the ERS retirement fund, shore up the law enforcement correctional officer supplemental retirement fund. But what we don't have yet is a specific provision to provide an increase in benefits to current retirees. That is something we've been working on night and day. And uh, oh, before I forget, I'm sorry, I skipped, I skipped a point, the, a very significant one actually. Um, there is a, a provision in Senate Bill 222, which has passed both houses and has been approved by both the House and Senate, it, which would allow 20 days of paid family leave uh, for those who, upon birth of a child, by an employee or the employee's spouse or adoption of a child. And that provision um, would be, in, that would be in a benefit in addition to, in addition to the annual and, and sick leave that's already being provided. So uh, that's a really significant benefit. TPEA has supported it from the beginning. And we were the only group, uh, by the way, that testified for it over on the, in committee on the House side. Uh, there's a bill that would affect TxDOT employees for those in the pay ranges A12 through A17, they would get um, they would be able to get paid twice a month, and I think there are a lot of employees who would find that uh, beneficial to their household budgets. So that that's a bill again that TPEA has supported uh, by Mr. Wally, and there is a bill by Mr. Frank which would allow an additional option, a, a kind of cash balance option or pension payments. So, so uh, you might want to go to the TPA website and, and check out the, these uh, various bills because we have a whole list of them there uh, and other legislation of interest to state employees and retirees. Like I said earlier, we are advocating and we're testifying in every way we can for, for a retiree benefit, a 13th check, a one-time supplemental payment. We're asking for $2,000 roughly speaking, uh, to go uh, and, and for a 13 check in the amount of $2,000. And uh, we have conducted, you'll see the, as you see on the screen, uh, a PR and media campaign. We've been able to get some, uh, the president of the TPA retiree chapter has been able to get a, a guest editorial in the Houston Chronicle and featured in the Quorum Report. Uh, and uh, we've also had retirees making visits to legislative offices, and we'll continue to do so in the coming week. And uh, we're also, we've launched an advertising campaign for that 13th check. So we're, we're turning, up, turning every stone we can, trying to find a way to uh, find the money and find support for a 13th check for our state retirees who so, so need it. Uh, we're asking folks to it call or email budget conferee members, and you can email them. You can go to tpea.org, and you can see there uh, the click, click. You have to click on the uh, advocacy page, and that will give you the email addresses and phone numbers of the members of the budget conference committee. We also are asking folks to call the lieutenant governor's office, Lieutenant Governor Patrick, to tell them how much a 13 check is needed and deserved. And so that number is 512-463-0001. 512-463-0001. So please if you do nothing else, do call the Lieutenant Governor's office because they are taking tally of how many calls they get from state retirees uh, about this issue. And we think it's important that the, we do everything we can to elevate the issue and the importance of it in the eyes of the conferees and the, and the lieutenant governor. Andy, did you want to 
oh, you want to track, if you want to track the bills, the appropriations bill and other related legislation, you can see there on the screen uh, the where you go to tpea.org and you just follow the you click through advocacy advocacy action center and you'll go to bills and, and they'll all show up um, now once again the conference committee needs to finish its work before the session's out on both budget bills and when they do they goes back to the house and the senate each to vote on it to approve it and from there it goes to the governor and the governor has until basically 20 days after passage of the bill to either sign it, <clears throat> veto it, or let it become law uh, without his signature. So that's kind of the, the sequence we're in right now. Now on the House side, especially, there's a hard deadline of May 8th for uh, bills to come out of committee. But so far, there have been over 1,200 bills that have come out of House committee and that are being in what's called the Calendars Committee. Uh, that's the committee the House designates to review uh, bills that have been reported out of committee and set them on the House calendar. And as of about a week ago, I don't have today's information yet, but the House had passed about 300 and some odd bills and the Senate had passed over 500 bills. So uh, clearly the House is going to be on a fast track here, I think, to catch up. And uh, on that note, I'm going to pass it over to Ann. But again, we really appreciate you as a, and we would ask you to consider being a TPA member too. As Ray said, we do appreciate you, and, and we are continuing to work not only through the appropriations process and the, the legislative process for both active employees, but also retirees. So we will keep pushing. We're going to be at the Capitol this afternoon and, and all next week to keep moving the issues forward that are important to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us. And um, we'll be happy to try to answer them when we're back in the office, but we're we're very seldom here. So it takes us a few days uh, to get to them. But we think that we have had a good legislative session so far with all the member, uh, the pay raises for state employees across the board. The first time since 2014, the insurance, the retirement contributions. And we just have one more push for retirees to get their 13th check. So we'll continue to keep you updated. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate that, Ray. Thank you for the update as well. Just a quick reminder, we have several folks that join us that are not TPA members, and we appreciate you being here. Your membership in TPEA protects your biggest asset. That's your pension and your retiree benefits, but it also protects things such as your pay and your work conditions if you're an active employee right now. There are so many benefits to being with TPEA. TPA was there before ERS. And because of TPA, you enjoy some of the benefits that you have today through ERS. If you want to join TPEA, there are two different levels that you can join. If you're an active employee, it's $7.50 a month. And that includes all of the membership benefits plus the, uh, the workplace advocacy that you may have if you have an adverse workplace action. If you're a retiree, it's $2.50 a month. The same for an associate member. If you're not necessarily a retiree, but you may be a spouse of a retiree or a spouse of an active employee, and you want to add to the voice of TPEA. So many of the issues that are passing through or that are on the budget docket or in different bills are because the members of TPEA have stepped up and put their volume of voices behind this. And so it's just a tremendous opportunity for you to, uh, to, to join join the group and and not only reap the benefits personally but also collectively of the wins that TPA has uh, brought to the table over the past several years. If you have any questions about anything that Ray or Ann have mentioned, put those into Q&A and they can type those responses back to you, but we also record all of the questions and if we can't get back to you today, we can respond back to you because it does will tell us uh, who sent the question in and we can respond back to you as well. But thank you so much, uh, Ray and Ann, for sharing. And I uh, want to have them stay with us because we're going to talk about some things as we go through here about TPA, but about the benefits and the things that we're the, the topic at hand today. TPA does more than just provide member benefits and provide a collective uh, resource for voices for active and retired state employees. They do as you've seen here today, advocate on behalf of protecting your paid health care, advocating for raises, workplace environment uh, condition situations, lobbying for 13th checks and for funding for ERS 
to provide your pension benefits and the potential of a COLA in the future. So many different things that TPA does for you. That investment in your membership is a small price for that. And there are many benefits of having TPEA and AMBA, Association Member Benefits Advisors. We are an exclusive endorsed partner with TPEA to provide you member benefits. These member benefits can fill gaps that don't aren't covered by your great state benefits. We're going to talk a little bit about that. They're portable. If you leave the state employment for whatever reason, go out in the private sector for a while, come back, whatever, you can take these benefits with you. But today, especially for the conversation that we're talking about, you can have benefits that you can extend to family members. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's for kids that uh, have aged out of your state benefits. And we're going to talk about the most popular one today, and that is the dental and vision benefits. And we're going to kind of break down a little bit the ERS benefits that you have, which are very, very good. We're going to talk about the TPEA benefits that are available to you as well. Explain just a little bit of the differences, again, because if you're an active employee or you're a retiree and you have ERS dental benefits, we're not telling you substitute these in any way, shape, or form. We're going to show you just how you can leverage your TPA membership to take advantage of some of these benefits as well and make the most of your options out there. As I mentioned, you have dental insurance availability to you as a state employee, family, and retirees through ERS, Delta Dental, Del Dental Choice. You've got two or three different options depending upon where you are. And the state has a pretty good subsidy for these, whether you're active or you're retired. There are some better coverages for your in-network um, dentists, and that's fine. That's great. I'd highly encourage you to go check out the ERS website. Really, a, really a great website that breaks down all of your coverages in there. The thing that you have with your ERS benefits, there are specific enrollment periods. So if you missed an enrollment period, you have to wait until the next year, unless you have a, a status change, a marriage, a death, a birth, something like that. And that eligibility is limited to you, your spouse, and your dependent children under the age of 26. And as we know, some of those eligibility issues can change from time to time, depending upon your work status, spouse, age of your children, things like that. So you do have some very good benefits. And as we mentioned, we are not in this conversation, advocating you to change or drop or do anything to your ERS benefits. We want you to maintain those because TPA, with many others, has fought to provide those benefits for you. And Ray mentioned to provide the continued state subsidy for those benefits. Now, with the Texas Public Employee Association, you have some other options. If maybe, say, you missed an open enrollment period or you miss the, uh, uh, you have a, a dependent that has maybe aged out of your benefits, things like that. And these benefits available for you for dental are through the Emeritus program. Emeritus is the largest provider of dental insurance across the country. It gives you freedom to choose whatever dentist you want. Now, there are some in-network and out-of-network benefits that are different, but you can go to any dentist you want to. You can enroll anytime you want to. So if you have a child that ages out of your benefits, you can enroll them and they're eligible for the first of the month after you enroll them. If you're leaving state employment, going to the private sector, don't have access to dental benefits, you can enroll the, to the effective to coincide with whenever your dental benefits stop from the state, that type of thing. There's no long-term contracts. Again, as I mentioned, your parents are eligible, adult children are eligible. We lock in the rates, and there's a rewards program that's a little bit different. So I'm going to kind of walk you through some of these benefits. Feel free to drop any questions in there, but I'm also going to show you at the end how you can get your questions answered about all different things out there. So let's take a look at the plan. The plan is an interesting plan. It is a group plan, meaning that it is for TPEA members, and so that it's giving you group rates as well as group access in terms of the enrollment. But you have three different types of services that are available to you, type one, type two, and type three. Your coverage in your first year is a little bit reduced, but after your first year with the plan, it goes up to 100% of whatever the, uh, the maximum allowables are. So at type one, your routine cleanings, x-rays, things like that. In network or out of network, it doesn't matter. 70% coverage your first year of the cost. It's 100% after the first year. Type two, some of your fillings, any type of repairs, your panoramic x-rays, 60% coverage in your first year, 80% coverage after the first year for all type two coverages. Your type threes, your more 
uh, I call it invasive, but your more uh, um, serious type of, uh, of care that you need, root canals, crown repairs, crowns, things like that, any oral surgeries, 25% coverage the first year, 50% after that. And that's pretty standard across the board uh, that you would have some out-of-pocket expenses out there. There are some orthodontic services that are out here, $1,000 maximum lifetime coverage. There's 50% in the first um, after the first 12 months. So you do have to have a waiting period for your orthodontic surgery or services. There's a maximum of $1,250 coverage per calendar year per person. There is a $75 deductible for the plan. It is waived for your type one, just your routine cleanings. So pretty standard plan across the board. There is a little bit of a um, lesser coverage in the first year, and then it goes up to your standard coverage after that. You see the group rates out there on the side. Again, I'll show you how you can get that um, for yourself or for your, your family members after that. Now, I talked about the rewards program. This is what makes this plan unique for TPEA members. Emeritus says, we want you to have your preventative cleanings. We want you to have dental claims. How many insurance companies tell you we want you to have claims? Emeritus, TPEA, and AMBA, we want you to have claims because we know that good oral hygiene prevents problems in the future, but it also gives you good overall health. If you have at least one dental claim a given year, and you keep that benefit paid under $500, then next year you can carry forward $250 into the following year. And so that can, can increase your benefit of coverage or the amount of coverage you can have in the following year. The most you can carry forward is $1,000. So this is how this would work. Say you go in and you have a routine cleaning or a cavity filled in 2023. There's $94 in cost. That's not what you pay, but they just say what's the overall cost and whether they bill you deductibles, all that kind of stuff, doesn't matter what it is. Then your maximum benefit is $1,250 in the year. You didn't get anywhere close and you kept your payment under $500. You will then get an additional $250 reward to carry into 2024 that you can use. And so we have members that will, not that you want to delay coverage, but you know that you've got to have eventually a crown replaced, or you're going to have to have something uh, more expensive in the future. They will save up their rewards, and then they will have up to um, $2,250 in total that they can use towards their benefits. So it's really a neat reward program, but the bottom line with the reward program is, is it pays for you to continue to go see the dentist, to have that type of preventative care and those type of things like that. So um, it allows you to have those rewards coming for you. Now, we have a lot of questions from many state employees that say, I've already got coverage from the state. Do I need this? Maybe not. But we have some state employees and we have retirees that have coverage through ERS and it's great coverage, like I said. But with this plan, you can double dip. And what that means is you can have both the state plan and get your coverage, and you can have your dentist file on your Emeritus plan if you take the TPEA plan, and you've got more coverage. So if you've got to have some heavier duty oral surgery, something like that, this gives you the option or the ability to double up. And so we have this quite frequently, state employees and retirees that have the state plan through ERS, they'll also get the TPEA plan, double up and have coverage for them as well. So it's really a neat option for you out there. Now, there's also another benefit to being an Emeritus TPEA dental policy holder. You get a free prescription drug card. It's not insurance. It's not a substitute for Part D Medicare or anything that you've got on the retiree side, but it does allow you just to be able to go into extra pharmacies, get a little bit of a discount up to 65% on generics, 40% on brand name prescriptions. They will always tell you, hey, your plan through the state may provide a bigger discount, but if this saves you some extra money, just another way to stretch your benefits, just another way to, uh, to keep this as a benefit for you as well. All right, we had a question here that talks about if I move to another state, do I still get the coverage? That's the beautiful thing about Emeritus. With the Emeritus Dental Program, they've got networks that are all across the country. This plan would work anywhere with any Emeritus dentist. If they are not in the network, then you would possibly um, pay a little bit more of an out-of-pocket, so to speak. But yes, you can use this plan anywhere in the 50 United States. So that's a great question out there. Okay, 
let's jump in and talk about your vision benefits because this is the most these are the two most popular TPEA benefits that people say, hey, I want this. If you have it through the state, again, we're not encouraging you to switch by any stretch of the imagination. This could be for, like I said, if you're leaving state employment, you need it for a child that's aged out, something like that. You do have vision benefits available to you through TPEA, through your pro program. It is through VSP, which again is one of the largest vision providers in the nation. It's in network and out of network benefits as well. You can choose from thousands of doctors all across the country. A lot of these doctors are in places like Walmart vision centers where you can do a one-stop shop. You can go see the doctor, you can have your exam, and then get your eye, eye care and eyewear and vision needs all taken care of in one place. It has coverage for visits every 12 months, frames every 24 months, certain allowances towards those frames, as well as discounts on frames that are above those costs and above your allowances out there as well. It covers your lenses every 12 months, single vision, lined bifocal and lined trifocal lenses are covered. You get a discount if you're wanting those non-lined bifocals, the uh, um, scratch coating and the, the uh, shading, things like that as well. And then contact lenses, if you're getting those in lieu of eyeglasses every 12 months. Now, how I use my benefits, I'll go to the Walmart optician, optometrist that I go to, and then I will take my contact prescription and go to 1-800-CONTACTS because I can get my allowance will go further um, going through 1-800-CONTACTS. So it allows me to stretch my, my budget uh, a little bit further both ways that way. But one of the biggest, biggest benefits, if you're considering LASIK surgery, any type of surgery like that, you get a 15% discount using the VSP through the VSP approved doctor. So it can really be a huge, huge savings out there for you as well. Now, when you compare this to the state of Texas vision plan, again, I'm not saying one's better than the other, and I'm definitely not telling you stop your vision coverage through the state and go with TPA. That's not what I'm saying at all. ERS provides a great benefit package to you. Highly encourage you to keep that. But if you wanna compare, go out to the ERS plan and look at that. But you can see with VSP, if you choose a network provider, and again, there are thousands all across the country, just like dental with Emeritus, there are VSP providers all across the country. Your exams, your single lenses, your lined bifocal and trifocals all covered in uh, full. You get a frame allowance of $150, $170 on feature frames. Contacts, if you're using elective contacts, um, you get $150 allowance. Medically necessary, it's covered in full. If you go to out of network, you see that you get allowances for those. And so a copay is just $25 for your lenses and things like that, but there's no copay for exams or contact lenses. So again, could be a little bit cheaper out there. And then you can see your frequencies and things like that. So again, just a quick comparison that's out there for you as well. Let me check, see if there's any questions we've got out here. Um, we've got that. Um, you can, at least ask a great question here says, I know you have signed, I've signed up for dental coverage throughout through TPA. Can I add vision coverage at any time? Absolutely. These are totally separate plans. We find that most new members to TPEA, they will add dental and vision at the same time. But if you've got one or the other, you can always pick them up at, at uh, different times and I'll show you how you can do that. So it's really easy to do. You can enroll very simply that way as well. Again, as I mentioned, you do have out of network benefits with VSP low monthly rates, $13 out there. I don't think there's going to be a change to those rates coming up, but again, pretty inexpensive rates for you out there in that regards. All right, let me see if there's any other questions out here before we jump on through there. Um, Diana asks, can you have both the TPEA plan and the regular state plan? Yes, you can have. Now, the benefits to me on the vision plans and the two differences, I really don't see the necessity for having both. Um, where I see the benefit would be with the dental plan. So not to say you can't have both, but uh, I think you're going to see more benefits. The stacking, the volume of coverage is greater with a dental plan than maybe just saving a few dollars here or there or getting more contacts, things like that. So just my two cents in that regards. Now, if you've got other questions, again, Hit those up in the q and I can answer those for you as well. I always want to remind you for TPEA members, you have discounts like you wouldn't believe. The TPEA website has all the member discounts out there. There are so many for travel. 
if you're living in in Austin area, there are so many for restaurants, uh, shops, um, all kind of apartment discounts, things like that. You also have the Passport program or the My Amba Discounts program, and they are running specials like crazy right now. If you're thinking about planning any type of travel this late spring, Memorial Day in the summer, thinking about going up to Great Wolf Lodge up in Dallas and Grapevine up there, you can get almost 75% off the rooms up there. Tremendous discounts. It's graduation season coming up. There are so many discounts for um, shopping, for electronics and technology. Dell, Apple, Lenovo run hot sales all the time. If you're planning your summer cruises, time to do that. Mother's Day is very soon coming up. Don't forget about that. 100 flowers, you can save money. And then in the Austin area, since we have so many state employees in the Austin area, I encourage you, go out there, check it out. Places like Rick's Cleaners, so many restaurants, so many ways to make your paycheck stretch further, all because of your relationship and your membership in TPEA. So don't forget these things. Go check those out that way as well. John, John, yes, sir. Uh, there is one question I think that uh, might want to be addressed. And the, the anonymous attendee said they're asking if they move to another state, would they continue to get the, the dental coverage? Absolutely. Absolutely. This The plans are totally state agnostic. Now, the networks may be smaller in certain areas, and you may not get the in-network benefits if you move to a rural part of Utah or something like that. But absolutely, the coverage is everywhere, and it goes with you regardless. And that's the beauty of having the portability in this that while there is a network, it's a national network, but there are out-of-network benefits that go along with that. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate that. And there are some other questions in there that are more specific. I will try to answer those offline, send you emails and that. So we appreciate you sending those questions in. Thank you very much for that. Just a couple of reminders. We have some really interesting webinars coming up next month. We've got the basics of Medicare. And we're really going to talk about how Medicare works with your retiree coverage the ERS there's a lot of confusion about what do I have to do? What do I need to do? Should I do something out there? We want to demystify all of that for you. Make sure that you understand, especially you get those questions of I'm turning 65, but my spouse is younger. How does that work? So we're going to talk about the basics of Medicare, how it works with your ERS plans. On June 23rd, we're going to talk about protecting your nest egg with the stock market volatility, with maybe the ways that you've saved up money. We're going to talk about the five biggest threats to your nest egg, how you can protect yourself from uh, those threats. And then in the, the peak of summer travel season, we're going to talk about emergency transportation issues in the state and how despite what states do, despite what the federal government does to try to regulate ambulances and air ambulances, how that cost can be really astronomical, even if you have the tremendous state benefits that you have for transportation. So we're going to talk about those things. Make your reservations. Be on the lookout for the emails out there as well for that. And please, 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 and Ann and Ray talked about this. If you know of a coworker, if you're sitting in an office right now and you're looking around and you're saying, hey, I've got five coworkers that are not members of TPEA, tell them about these Lunch and Learn series. Let them know the value, not only of what they can learn, but more importantly, the value of membership in TPEA. Even if you use it on the discount program just for a few, the a few discounts, you're going to save more than what you use for the, the dues. But the raise that, that that's going into the budget, the contributions towards your benefits plans, contributions towards pension that TPA members have helped put into place is going to be huge. This is such a big reason to invest in your in your uh, public employee association. So please, please, please do that. Tell them about that. So I'm going to open it up for a few more questions. If you've got those, drop it into Q&A. If you want to find out more about the TPEA benefits, dental, vision, anything that we've uh, talked about today, or the full line of benefits, all you've got to do is take your smartphone, hover over that QR code. A little form is going to pop up. And you can just simply say dental vision. You can select any of the benefits. You can put in other. You can type in membership. We'll have someone contact you about how to become a member. It's just super easy. We want to make sure that you become a member as well. You can also, if you're on your smartphone, on your tablet, all you've got to do is simply uh, email me if you don't have access to your camera feature. Email me at john.green at amba.info. I'd be more than happy to get you in contact with someone who can help you with the dental plans or any questions about some of the stuff that Ray and Ann have talked to you about as well today. So I'm going to stop recording now. 
leave it open for any other questions.